Good evening, everyone, for those joining us in church and for those joining us online. Uh, just some notices to draw your attention to. Uh, firstly, our all age service on Sunday will be uh, at 11 o'clock uh, for in-church worship. Uh, if you turn up early, then you'll be part of that countdown timer and you can greet people in church with a wave. For those joining online, uh, our countdown timer is at 10 to 11 and you can greet people with a text uh, and then later on it'll be on YouTube in the afternoon. Our midweek service next, next week will be looking at Jesus' praise for all believers from John 17. And that's at the earlier time of eight o'clock. So our countdown timer will be at 10 to eight on Facebook. And then later on, it'll be on YouTube on Thursday. Our Easter vestry is on the 21st of, that's Wednesday, the 21st of April. And that will be after the midweek service. So it, the midweek service again will be at the earlier time of eight o'clock so that our meeting won't be too late. And then uh, if you have any items for the food bank, if you want to bring those uh, either to church or to the rectory, and we'll make sure that they get to Enniskillen. There's an opportunity during our service for, if you want a prayer for yourself or for someone else, and then during the, the, the time of silence, then there's an opportunity that you just lay a hand on your chest if you're praying something for yourself and stretch out your hand praying for someone else. So let's stand as we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts. Help us to pray and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and the truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us worship. And we begin our service by singing, God forgive my sins in Jesus' name and Abba Father.
So we come before our God and Father and we confess our sins. Let us pray. And together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for Easter. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our mind good desires, so by your continual help, we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before the sermon, we sing, You Are the Vine.
Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them, for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. In this passage, Jesus is using the last I am statement. Having spoken about I am the bread of life in, in John chapter 6, now Jesus is talking about life but he's talking about not just the bread of life, not just the light of the world and, and the resurrection of life, but now he's encouraging us that if we want life, it's got to be not something that we simply, we might think about bread, something you just take and you eat it, and then you won't take it for another day or whatever. But Jesus is now talking about remaining in him. And he uses this illustration of the vine and the branches. I am the true vine. By saying that, he's talking about Israel was regarded as the vine, the one that was meant to be fruitful, and that God had chosen that through Israel, all nations would be blessed. But what do we see? Israel failed to do what they were meant to do, and so God had always planned that he would send his son into our world so that we would see what God is truly like, and that his kingdom would be brought in in its fullness. And so he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. And what do we see? Jesus is telling us that both the father and the son, and we know later on that talking about the spirit, that the Trinity, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, want us to be fruitful. They want us to be successful in the kingdom. When Jesus talks about it, he says, my father's a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So God wants our lives to be fruitful. And so what is it? that Jesus says in this passage? Well, the first thing is life. That we need to remain in him. That if we are to be those who are bearing fruit, we have to recognize that it, it only comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ, from being in a relationship that remains. It's a steady relationship. In fact, it's because he uses the vine and the branches, we know that it's, he's talking about a relationship that grows. Because a vine grows and the branches grow, and he wants us to have growth as Christians, that we wouldn't be those who simply say, I came to Christ, and I'm still the same as what I did when I came to Christ. I'm sure you've heard people talking about at Billy Graham Mission, people would come to Jesus singing just as I am and they would stay just as they were. But that's not what it should be like. As Christians, we're meant to be those who grow, who become more and more like the one that we're connected to. We're meant to be more like Jesus. And so he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now we know what, when Jesus is saying, apart from me, we can do nothing, he's talking about kingdom. He's talking about things that last. Obviously, we can do things without God. There was a bishop who once said that the church does 90% of what the church does, we do without God. And that's sad, isn't it? And it is a reflection that often the things that we do, we do not in the power of the spirit, but in the power of the flesh. It's fleshly things rather than things that are of the spirit and they're of the kingdom and therefore will be eternal and remain. That's why Jesus talks about that our work will be tested with fire to see what we've built our lives on, to see whether or not it's things that are eternal or temporary. So we need to remain. We need to stay close to Jesus Christ how does he say we do that? First thing is love. About relationships. Jesus says this. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. So the first thing is we're remaining in the love of Christ. And it's interesting that Jesus in here, he reminds us that we are those who are loved. And we shouldn't, we should never get away from that. Because it's that understanding that we're loved by God that should motivate us to do and want to do things for him. That's why Paul says, but God demonstrates his own love for us. And this is that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. That sense of while there was no sense of us coming to God, God came to us. God showed the depth of his love when he moved first so we would move in return. And it's always that way with God, that he's the first one to move. And then we're always doing things. Worship is a response to what God has done. And worship, how we respond to God, should be love back, but love this way too. Just as the cross has that vertical and horizontal, so our love has to have that relationship too. And he says this in verse 10, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. There's obedience that has to be there. Just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. So that's the vertical. But then he goes on to say, what is his command? My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. That's the test. That's the litmus test as to how we are as Christians. Because when it comes to it, our relationship with God is something that is very private, that we're not meant to be those who are taking our Bibles out on the street and doing our quiet time out in the streets for people to see. But what we do on our knees and in our, in our room and in the church is meant to be reflected out there, that people see that we're those who are marked by love, that yes, we know we're loved by God, but we know that that response then is that we're meant to love others in the same way as we are loved. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. That's a challenge, isn't it? That's something that we know that we fall every day, but that's the mark that we're meant to try and reach. That's where we're meant to aim. If we aim any lower than that, it's not Christianity. And it's a challenge, isn't it? Because Jesus then goes on to say what love can look like. He says it's sacrificial. And he's talking about himself. Greater love is no one than this. And he laid down his life for his friends. And then he goes on to say, you are my friends. I don't call you slaves or servants. I call you friends. And he's going to lay down his life for his disciples and for us. And he's saying to us, that's the type of love you have to have for each other. Not that you physically have to lay down your life for someone, although that can happen. But we have to be willing to sacrifice what we think is our rights. Do you know, we're so good, isn't it, in this day and age about talking about what is our rights. And people talk about that they've got a right not to wear a mask not to get the vaccine. All these different things they're talking about, and it's all about self. Whereas what do we know? We know, certainly for me, I got the vaccine not for myself, but for others. And I think that's the way it has to be, that even though, if you're like me, I'm afraid of needles, but you have to be willing to do something, and it has to be sacrificial. When it comes to the church, what we find that often when it comes to how people determine whether or not a service was okay or not, it's to do with whether or not the worship song was played that they want. It's all about us, isn't it? Whereas actually, if we knew that certain worship songs would attract more and more young people, and it wouldn't necessarily be our type of worship, love would say we should have that type of worship instead of what I would want. And if you're like me, 
the worship doesn't happen in the church. It should happen out there. The best thing to do is to be listening to worship songs before you come to the service so that actually when you come to service, you're wanting to serve. You're wanting to give to other people. You're coming into church and into services thinking to yourself, now who can I bless? Who can I show love towards? Practically, Jesus says, love as I have loved you. And so that is relationship and therefore we cannot be saying that we're a Christian and then say it's okay to be a Christian in isolation. Jesus is building his church. It's about coming together. It's about being challenged, isn't it? People challenge us, don't they? The way that people respond to us or, or speak to us can sometimes rub us up the wrong way. And it challenges us to love in the way that Jesus loves. Because remember, Jesus showed love to the disciples, all of them. He washed the feet of all the disciples, even the one who was going to betray him. That's a challenge, isn't it? It shows that Jesus, even right up to the end, was willing to show love to those who he knew right and clearly were very much against him. And that's why Jesus was able to say, love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. The last thing is, in, a, in such a way that we can do these things, we need to lean it's about the resources that come from being in the vine, from remaining in him. And so Jesus talks then about, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so it will be even more fruitful. Now, if you look at your Bible, you'll see there's a little letter beside prunes. And if you look down to the bottom, it says that that can be read, he cleans. Okay? That makes sense when you see what the next verse is. You're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. So maybe you're sort of thinking when you're reading this before, you've thought, how does God prune? It's clear from what we read in the passage is that he prunes us mostly through his word and by his spirit. As we read the word of God and as we stay close to Jesus through reading his word daily, then that's where we're challenged, isn't it? We're challenged, hopefully, if we're reading it properly, we're coming to it and wanting to be ruled by it and ruled by the Spirit, not ruling our lives over the Scriptures, but being under the Scriptures. Then that's where it shapes us. So we go back to Joshua, where Joshua is told, meditate on the law day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. So we need to come to God's word every day. But then he says this, if you remain in me, verse 7 and 8, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now he's talking about prayer. Prayer, Bible, fellowship are mentioned in this passage. Prayer, we need to pray, understanding that God loves us so much and he wants us to ask. If we're remaining in him, then we will bear fruit. If we're remaining in him and being shaped by his word, then that will shape what we pray for. And so that's why Jesus is able to say that, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. The context is, if you remain in me and my words remain in you. Then what does he say in verse 8? This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The only way that we can bear fruit is by remaining in Jesus. And how we remain in him is being shaped by his word, is obeying what his word says, living by it. And how we do that is prayerfully. 
we come to him and we ask him to to mold us and make us more like Jesus. To show us what it is in his word that he's got for us today that will shape us and help us to live a life that impacts the world around us. That it's not something temporary, but something that's eternal. You see, the the amazing thing is that every one of us, if we're a Christian, we have the Holy Spirit within us, that everywhere where we go, we bring kingdom power and kingdom presence. And so the place where we go can be changed in some way by us being there. Just like I'm sure if you've ever gone into a dark room and you either use your phone and turn on the, the, the lamp of your phone or you, or you strike a match and the darkness flees. The light changes the atmosphere in the same way if we're truly living the way we're meant to, remaining in Jesus, his word remaining in us and shaping us, will bear much fruit, will change where we are. Because we have the one in us who made the world and therefore can change things. Change us and change the world around us. So those three things. Life. We need to remain in him. It's all about him. Nothing else. He's got to be number one in our lives. And it's got to be for him that we're doing it. For his glory. This is what Jesus is saying. This is to my Father's glory. It's not about gaining glory for ourselves or for a denomination or anything like that. It has to be kingdom and king first and foremost. Love, relationships. We need to be those who enjoy fellowship with other Christians even when it hurts. Even when we're driven up the wrong way. We don't give up fellowship because we're hurt. So many people leave church because they get hurt. And therefore they're giving way to Satan because what does he do? He roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And the easiest way for a lion to do that is to get one off to the side. Whereas when we stick together, when we pray for each other, when we are hurt by someone and we still bless them, that can only happen when we're in fellowship. When we take ourselves out of that, we're taking ourselves out of the place where God can shape us. And we lean on him because it's only in him and the resources that come from remaining in him, his word, prayer, the Holy Spirit, all that he longs to give us, He longs to give us joy. That your joy may be complete. It can only happen through a relationship with him and leaning on him. Let's pray. Father, we do pray that you'd help us. Lord, we fall so far short of that standard that you give us that we would love others as you have loved us. Would you show us, Lord, what that means to us this week? Would you show us, Lord, how we can either mend relationships that have gone bad, build relationships, Lord, that are yet to be what you see they could be. And Lord, help us that we would daily come to your word and allow your word to shape us. That we would be those who pray and intercede for others. That we would pray and ask things for ourselves too. Knowing that Lord you want us to bear fruit. But you want us to bear fruit that will last. And Lord may it all be for your glory. Amen. So we... Sing Jesus be the center.
we affirm our faith. To believe and trust in God the Father. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. To believe and trust in God the Son. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. To believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant, grant us your, your salvation. salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and, and grant, grant her, her government, government wisdom. wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and, and let, let your, your servants, servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and, and bless, bless those whom, whom you have chosen. chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let, let your, your glory, glory be over all, all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and, and renew, renew us by, by your, your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now there's an opportunity for you to pray something for yourself and something for someone else. And a sense that the Lord is present to heal. A sense that there's someone either online or in church who has a pain on their left hand side at the, at the back just above the shoulder blade. If you have any physical illness at this time, if it's appropriate for you to put a hand on that part or if just put your, lay your hand over your chest. I'm just going to speak healing over you. Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord who heals. I speak to the pain in someone's shoulder to be gone in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now to speak your healing over those who are sick right now. Speak to any pain to be gone in your name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I just pray something for yourself and something for someone else. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Our final hymn is hymn 313, The Spirit Came As Promised.
So we have our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. And we say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we turn to one another and we say the grace together. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So every blessing and Lorna is going to play us out. <laughs>